Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this two-part series, we'll be going through one mildly interesting trivia fact about each civilization in Age of Empires 2. It could be an especially unusual tech tree combination they have, a little known or obscure hidden effect for a bonus, or just a historical curiosity. Now, I make no promises up front that any of this will be helpful in a practical situation, but your AoE2 trivia knowledge will definitely grow three sizes. To keep things manageable, we'll be doing civilizations starting with letters A through K in this video, and L through V in a part two that will hopefully come out later this week. With that, we'll start off at letter A with the Aztecs. As we all know, they start with three extra carry capacity on their villagers. While this is good for collection rates on basically any resource, one fact you may not know is this has a big impact on milling deer. Having plus three carry capacity means three villagers can carry all the meat from a deer in a single trip during the Dark Age, minus what's lost to decay, after which they'll immediately start hunting a new fresh deer as the old one is used up. For a generic civilization, on the other hand, with three villagers, they end up taking two trips instead. One trip carrying their maximum amount, which is a bit less than Aztecs, and then a second trip with just a handful of food each, leading to a lot more wasted walking time unless you're micromanaging them. Thanks entirely to this bonus, Aztecs are in fact one of the only exceptions where three villagers are better than four when milling deer. Moving on to the Bengalis, their Wrath Chariot is of course unique for being able to switch between a melee and ranged mode. While that gives obvious advantages, this also gives them the dubious distinction of requiring the most techs of any unit to fully upgrade, requiring 17 different techs, costing over combined 8,600 resources. As a bonus fact, showing all of those techs on the screen just now is also the most video tracks I've ever had to add while editing, as there's nothing else in the game that has 17 unique things affecting it that I've needed to illustrate before. Naturally, a lot of the techs for the chariot apply to other units as well, so some of them you might be picking up anyway, but being a cavalry and cavalry archer hybrid is just a very expensive combination. Speaking of cavalry archers though, next up for the Berbers, this one you may know already, but I think is an easy enough confusion to be worth mentioning. Their interesting fact is the Berber's Camel Archer Unique unit is the only camel of any type in the game that has zero bonus damage against cavalry. On the flip side though, Camel Archers also have the advantage of taking less anti-cavalry bonuses than other cavalry archer variants. Basically, while they don't get the attacking upside of being a camel, they at least get the defensive advantages. Next up for the Bohemians, again continuing the cavalry archer theme, they're in fact the only non-American civilization without a mounted archer of any kind, as all other non-American civilizations have either cavalry archer or the elephant archer. Bohemians are also unique for being the only Eastern European civilization missing Hazar or bloodlines, breaking what was otherwise a very cavalry-heavy set of civilizations sharing that architecture. All of these facts together are pretty clearly a design choice to push Bohemians instead towards their actual identity of foot archers, spears, monks, and gunpowder, not cavalry. Now, as for the Britons, their fact is a bit more of a practical tip. I assume most players know that generally buildings require half the cost to repair from 1 HP to full as they would cost to rebuild, giving you a bit of an incentive to repair as a way to save resources. Town centers are unusual for not following this rule though, instead costing no stone but twice their wood cost to repair instead of half. It turns out this is even worse for Britons as their town center wood discount doesn't apply to repairing meaning it costs them four times as much to fully repair a town center as it does to build a new one in castle or imperial age. Adding salt to the wound, the Franks discount on castles does apply to their repairing, so this is just an especially bad case for Britons. Moving on now to the Bulgarians, their fact is about the Krepost. In the original 2019 Definitive Edition release, despite being very castle-like in many obvious ways, unlike a castle, the Krepos could be converted by enemy monks, though your enemy wouldn't be able to create conics from it. That was later changed, so now they can't be converted, which makes them now the only unique building in the game that monks are unable to steal from you. Next up for the Burgundians, their eco upgrades costing 33% less food is often considered a solid eco bonus and applies to all camp and mill upgrades, gill nets, as well as caravan and guilds at the market. For whatever reason though, it doesn't apply to the market techs, coinage, and banking, despite those generally being accepted as eco upgrades. Whether this is intentional to disincentivize slinging, an oversight, or the devs just don't consider those eco techs isn't totally clear. Moving on to the Burmese, their unique unit, the Arambai, has the distinction of having the lowest accuracy out of any non-siege unit with just 
In comparison, the Cavalry Archer sports a much more respectable but still not amazing 50% accuracy, though in their case that can be improved with thumb ring to 100%. Only the trebuchet, when targeting individual units, is technically worse than the Arambi, and really not by that much. Now as for the Byzantines, their mildly interesting fact is they're the only civilization with the combination of Paladin, Arblaster, and Siege Ram, which sounds pretty great on paper, especially for team games. On the flip side though, they're missing Bloodlines, Blast Furnace, and Siege Engineers to offset this. So especially the Paladin is quite a bit below average. And maybe surprisingly, despite these great options, Byzantines are quite a poor performing team civilization, according to the stats. Moving on now to the Celts, they're unique for being the only civilization having just two Imperial Age Blacksmith upgrades. Luckily, they have enough for fully upgraded Halberdier and Siege Onager. And really, what else do you need? In fact, I doubt anyone's even noticed those other techs are missing. Next up, for Chinese, their Chukunu is interesting for a whole bunch of reasons, with some unusual bonus damage behind the scenes and their quirky multiple projectiles. What you may not know about them though is they benefit the most out of any unit from Thumbring's fire rate boost. Generally, archers have their attack rate increased by either 11% or 18% depending on the unit, whereas Chukunu for some reason specifically have it set to improve their attack speed by 25%. In addition to this disproportionate benefit to their firing rate, they also get a nice discount on that tech in Castle Age, making it an even more obvious choice to pick up if you're planning to make Chukunu. Moving on to Cumans now, an interesting bit of trivia is that thanks to a Civ bonus, their Imperial Age Scout Cavalry is the fastest land unit in the game. Though if you get the Light Cavalry upgrade, they actually drop to being the third fastest, as a little known fact about Light Cavalry is that it comes with a tiny drop in speed. Of course, what they lose in speed, they more than make up for in other improved stats, and it's definitely worth getting the upgrade in a practical situation. Next up for Dravidians, the elephant in the room here is there's a notable criticism circulating that both their unique tech medical core, and even more so, their unique unit the Therissidae, are allegedly based on Wikipedia claims that have since been removed for dubious historical accuracy. At this point, both now seem to be historical misconceptions, living on primarily through Age of Empires. Of course, in fairness, coming up with unique units and tech names every time is probably not an easy job, especially when it comes to niche topics. Now, as for the Ethiopians, you might expect Goths to have the fastest trained infantry in the game after Perfusion, or maybe that title goes to the Malay's Karambit Warrior, which costs just half a population. And while they are both created very quickly, in fact the Ethiopian Shotel Warrior is the most spammable unit after their unique tech Royal Heirs. This is made even better with a Berber ally, but even without that, they're the fastest trained unit in the game. Moving on to the Franks, this is another little historical one, where despite the Arblast being a medieval French word for the crossbow, derived from the Latin Arcuballista, in AoE 2, Franks are in fact lacking the Arbalester upgrade entirely. This may not be completely surprising though, as in Age of Empires, pioneering or naming a technology historically in no way guarantees your civilization will have access to it in the game, most often due to balance considerations. Next up, for the Goths, this may be too well known to include here for longtime players, but given its impact on the game, I think it's worth mentioning. Back in the original Age of Kings of 1999, they were in fact the first and only civilization with two unique techs, paving the way for the introduction of Castle Age unique techs in the Forgotten Expansion for all civilizations, which we now take for granted. Had that precedent not been set, it's hard to say if we would have eventually gotten two unique techs as a standard for all other civilizations, or if it would have stated just one. Next up for the Gajars, despite being considered quite strong in online play, interestingly they're the only civilization without a fully upgradable military unit. In fact, they ever so slightly beat out the Goths for the title of least upgradable units, as Goths have fully upgradable hand cannoneers, of all things. For Gajars, this is the result of missing ring armor, blast furnace, and siege engineers, but even a lot of common unit upgrades, like pikemen, arbalester, and champion, are also missing on top of that. Luckily, they have very good unique units and camels to make up for it, emphasizing their slightly offbeat playstyle. Moving on now to Hindustanis, they're officially a gunpowder civilization, if we go by the standard classifications. Of the gunpowder civilizations though, they're unique for missing the Bombard Tower, as Bohemians, Portuguese, Spanish, and Turks all have it. Instead, all they really have are very good hand cannoneers, with extra range and armor, making them apparently gunpowdery enough for the gunpowder club. Next up, for the Huns, some of you longtime players may know that each civilization had a quick 5 second jingle prior to the definitive edition that is no longer in the game. 
Now while those classic jingles have been rewritten into largely excellent expanded minute long themes, the Han jingle is unique for having directly made the jump to definitive edition. While the tech is relatively unpopular, that sound is played when you research atheism, alerting your enemies that their relics are going to generate less gold. While there are other examples of text playing unusual sounds when researched, the Hun still have the only jingle to have directly survived the transition to the new game. Moving on now to the Incas, this is maybe one of the more obscure on our list. It turns out some of the male Inca units, specifically the male villager and monk, were actually voiced by Sijin, founder of Forgotten Empires. To the best of my knowledge, the current voice lines in use today are all still the original bedroom recordings he made for the Forgotten Empires mod long before it was picked up and made into an official expansion by Microsoft. Now, as for the Italians, their interesting fact is one astute players may have noticed before, which is that they're unique for having all of their Civ bonuses come in the form of discounts. No other civilization contains even close to this many discounts together, though I'm not sure whether this was intended to be their central identity or it just worked out that way. Keep in mind, instead of cheaper fishing ships at release, for example, their fishing ships had plus two line of sight, so it seems like it wasn't the plan to begin with. At this point though, it's discounts all the way down, plus even a unique tech, giving you one more for good measure. If you're really a sales shopper and hate paying for things at full price, then Italians might be right up your alley. Next up for the Japanese, this one's pretty straightforward, and it's simply that the Japanese samurai is the fastest attacking land unit in the game. Now, technically fire ships attack a bit faster, but there's sort of a weird exception, and we can ignore that if we restrict ourselves to just talking about land units. This is of course because of the Japanese faster attack bonus combined with the Samurai attacking 5% faster than the champion by default. Moving on now to the Khmer, an interesting fact is despite everyone I've ever heard calling them Khmer, that is actually an incorrect pronunciation. My understanding is it should be pronounced Khmer, and the best explanation for the confusion is that the French romanticized the word from the Khmer's own spelling without realizing the final R that they wrote was meant to be silent. The mistake has since just caught on, and while I think I'll keep calling them Khmer to avoid confusion for viewers, just know all of us are saying it wrong and pronouncing it as it's spelled instead of how it should sound. Next up for Koreans, something that all too often surprises me in game, so I thought I'd include it as a way to remind myself going forward, is that they're the only civilization without the demo ship line, though on the flip side, they're also the only civilization with the full university tech tree. Bohemians, Italians, and Turks almost share that title, but are each missing one tech. But that brings us up to the halfway point and letter K. In the next part, we'll cover the remaining civilizations. Shout out to Seb, James, John, Jockster, Amaral Zarkon, Justin, Kyle, Samantha, Woodruff, and everyone else on Patreon for their ongoing support, which helps me do research intensive videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for part two.